Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this beautiful October afternoon. The sun's out now, but it's been raining on us all morning, if you wonder why we're wearing a rain jacket. Okay, but what we're doing today is we're just out for a little hike with a couple of dogs. Uh, I have a, a Husky, and somewhere around here I have a little Malinois training, and they're both here for adventure training, so when, they're, when the dogs come hang out with me for that kind of stuff, uh, we go hiking, we shoot guns, we ride ATVs, we uh, get in a boat, we teach them how to swim. We just do a lot of fun stuff, okay? Now, as the dogs are here, they all have different personalities, and their different personalities kind of, you know, they affect how we approach training. Okay, so you'll notice that uh, one of these dogs, out of all the dogs here, is on a leash. Okay, and so when I went to put this leash on the dog this morning, I started thinking about uh, something. I was on Instagram the other day, and somebody was giving me a hard time, you know, asking me questions about force-free training. I had to, be, you know, be honest. I'm like, I don't know anything about force-free anything. Like, I've been forced to do stuff ever since I was a little kid. I was forced to brush my teeth, forced to mow the yard, forced to, you know, clean up my room. And now I'm forced to pay taxes. I, mean, I get forced to do all kinds of stuff that I don't like to do. And, uh, yeah, I'd like for all that force to go away. And I got to thinking about that with dog training. You know, is there really such a thing as force-free dog training? Okay. And I put this leash on this dog, and I thought to myself, well, you know, what if I don't put this leash on a dog? Uh, what's going to happen? I said, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't be forcing him to do anything. I, I honestly, I put this leash on this dog so I could force him to stop running away. Okay, because I brought him out here uh, earlier, and uh, most of the dogs they run around in a circle and they kind of come check in all the time, you know. And what he did was he just started running in a straight line. He was just headed over to Mount Sterling. If you don't know where Mount Sterling is, look at it on a map. It's a long way from my house, and it's very dangerous. And so I put him on this leash so I could force him to stop moving away from me where he was going to get himself into trouble. He was either going to hurt himself or he was going to end up getting somebody else hurt like me. I got to climb down the creek over old barbed wire fence to find him. Okay. Or, uh, you know, he's going to tear up somebody's property. And I thought, well, yeah, I feel, I feel pretty justified in using the leash to force him to not do things that would be harmful to himself or others. Okay. And, I, and then I thought, well, but how would his owners feel? Right. So like back up there and show him this, this good looking dog, right? You know, very nice looking dog. He's got a good personality. But let's say we want to raise him. We want to raise him force free. OK, so I say, well, listen, dude, I'm not going to force you to do anything. So when his owners come back over here, they're like, hey, where's Loki? I said, well, you know what? He took off running one day and uh, I called him back, but but he didn't voluntarily want to come back. So I just let him keep running. So I guess maybe he's over in Mount Sterling or he's down in Pikeville or something. Maybe he'll be back later. I don't know. But uh, don't worry. I didn't use any force on him. <laughs> I mean, what is his owner going to say? Are they going to say, well, okay, Stoney, that's fine. He ran off. We don't know where he is. We don't know what happened to him, but at least you didn't use any force on him. Okay. And uh, I don't believe that's what they're going to say, you know. And I don't believe, not for one second, that this dog would rather be up at the kennel not getting to participate in this activity, than being able to participate in this activity, but being forced to refrain from doing things that are dangerous. I mean, I, I can't ask him, right? We don't speak the exact same language, but I know this, whenever I go to move, uh, you know, whenever I go to leave the kennel, he always looks at me like, hey, Stoney, can I go? And I'm like, sure, you can go. And I say, you know, if I could talk to him, I'd say, hey, can you, you know, refrain from doing things that are dangerous, destructive, or rude? And at this point, if he was honest, he would have to say no. And I said, all right, well, you can go, but I'm going to have to force you not to do those things. But you do get to go. What do you think he would take? What would you take? You know, you want to talk to me about force-free training, but you leave your dog in a little plastic box all day? You want to talk to me about force-free training, but you're not even any fun to be around, you know? Most of these people who give me a hard time, like on Instagram or something, like I look at them and look at their lifestyles, uh, you would have to force me to hang out with them, right? And they don't think about that. They don't think about the fact that ownership implies force. And given the opportunity, I believe most of their dogs would leave. Like if I showed up at their house and I said, hey dog, you can come live with me and do all the things I do, or you can stay here. You can stay in this apartment. You can stay in this little house. You can stay with your little boring walks on the leash. You can spend a lot of time in that little plastic prison with this crazy lady, okay? Or you can come hang out with me and do cool stuff all day. But I'm going to force you not to do things that are dangerous, destructive, or rude. You're not going to convince me that those dogs wouldn't rather come out and hang out with me. Now, a truly force-free trainer, if I approached them on the street and I told their dog, I said, hey, you can come live with me, and their dog chose me over them, 
the force free trainer would have to respect the dog's wishes and let it get in my truck and come do fun stuff with Uncle Stoney. And I don't think any of them will. So like the next time, you know, you hear people arguing about that force free stuff. Well, just ask them, say, hey, what if somebody comes up to, your, up, up to you in the park and tells you, hey, your dog can come live with me and I live an objectively better lifestyle than you and we'll let the dog choose. Will that person allow the dog to go with the stranger or will that person force the dog to stay in a situation where it doesn't want to stay? Okay, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, listen, you know, you're preaching to the choir if, uh, if you're trying to promote the idea of getting out and getting, doing, you know, getting moving and doing interesting things and being proactive in terms of you know, preventing uh, the types of problems that dogs have via exercise and structured positive reinforcement training. I mean, I, listen, I'm the king of that. Nobody does more fun stuff with dogs than I do, right? But can I honestly say that I do that stuff without using any force? Well, of course not. I, I, I mean, of, of course not. I do not think that force-free training exists. Now, if you believe that it does, okay, I want you to comment below and tell me where I'm wrong. And maybe if you live close, we'll arrange to meet at the park and see if your dog would rather come live with me or he'd rather stay with you, you know? I mean, like, I think that's the only fair way to solve that issue, right? Is, is get out and let's, you know, let's, let's put it to the test. You know, if you're gonna say you're a force-free trainer, Show me some videos of you doing cool stuff with your dogs. Come on, nerd. You know, and not using any force anywhere. You know, and trust me, hey, listen, you know, just from a practical point of view, I would rather not have to use much in the way of force because like putting a leash on a dog and trying to take them hiking, this is what I'm doing all day. Trying to deal with, you know, all the stuff they get wrapped around. Trying to get, deal with all the times that they wrap the leash around my foot. Almost tripped me. You know, but this is what it looks like to go out with a bunch of dogs who really don't need much in the way of being forced to stay close, but one dog that has to be forced to stay close, right? That's what it looks like. I had to put a leash on one of them. And whenever he goes to run off, I step on the leash and I stop him from being able to run off. Look, I'll do it again right here for you. Look. Back up there, cameraman. Look, he wants to go somewhere. Look, I'm going to force him to stay up here close to me. And over the course of time, this dog is going to start to understand that when we're out, what I say goes. And once this dog understands that I set the rules as it relates to being out, to being hiking, to being off the leash, to gaining access to fun stuff, he's going to comply. And then I'll be able to take this force away. Okay? But in the back of his mind, he'll always remember that I make the rules and I enforce the rules. Okay, and that allows me to do things with dogs that all the people who claim to be force-free trainers or who get on my Instagram and say things about me where they don't know me, they don't have a documented history of doing the things that I do, okay, you know, th that really puts it all out on the table for us all to look at, right, okay. So if you can't document your dogs getting out, doing interesting things, okay, under control, being able to interact with people, interact with other dogs, in a calm, attentive, and polite manner, okay, then don't be, you know, don't be telling me or anybody else who trains dogs that does demonstrate uh, their activities, don't be telling us we're doing it wrong, okay, because ultimately the proof is in the pudding.